Welcome, Japan. Welcome to another edition of Why Come Japan, the update show where I keep you informed about what's going on in Japan and in the world of Radri. If you're not on Discord, um, you should probably know that uh, I've switched completely to Twitch. I'm now a streamer on Twitch because that's where the streaming culture is at. And But that's not why I'm here today. Well, I guess actually that's one of the reasons why I'm here today is to explain that I'm, you know, making content on Twitch. But not only that, I wanted to talk about the top five podcasts here in Japan. Or I think, I guess I should maybe rephrase it. I should say the top five podcasts about Japan by foreign people. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Uh, Now, the way I'm doing, I'm measuring this, the way I'm considering my top five and I'm ranking them is based upon this podcast. Um, and how to improve this podcast. This show has kind of, it needs a little bit better organization to get better numbers, get better views, uh, get more listens, more downloads, you know, because that's what you want. You want to make your hobby into um, something you could make money off of, if you can. Um, But while at the same time, having fun and not burning yourself out. So without further ado, I will begin the countdown. But before the countdown begins, because I know it's only five, if you saw the title, I hope you did, um, I have to go through the honorable mentions. So I found a bunch of podcasts here in Japan done by foreigners who have a lot of things that they talk about where it's about either games or or maybe not so much movies. Yeah, sometimes movies or travel, and it's kind of a nice, like, uh, plethora, like a huge like selection of different things japan related and i kind of wanted to find like what would best fit this kind of show the why come japan show because obviously this show has kind of evolved into something that's just an interview show where i interview people that is basically like the same thing as why did you come to japan the actual show which i should probably watch to get some ideas because i need to make it more because i kind of want to make the show more game showy that's what it seems like it kind of needs to be because i on Twitch, I've been seeing a bunch of people who do, like, game shows, and everybody shows up to them. Um, I sometimes worry when having these interview shows, it's just some boring conversation with me and the guest. So I'm always trying to spice it up a little, because uh, <laughs> I, I don't want life to be boring. Boring life. I don't, I just, I don't want to live the boring life. So, uh, without further ado, the first person on my list for honorable mention is Japan Pod 101. Fun fact, I interned for them. They are innovative language learning in Akasaka Mitsuke uh, near the Hooters building. Or not building, I guess it's just the uh, space. Yeah, the, the Hooters space. Um, and they basically just do language learning, boring as sin, uh, language learning uh, podcasts, I suppose. I don't know, are they interesting? <laughs> I think they're very boring. Um, it, it's just sort of like picking up a textbook. And it's, it's like, imagine if you picked up an English textbook and it's like, Hello, how do you do? I'm fine, thank you, and you. And you, you just repeated that all the time. Um, it's like eventually you want to branch out and start learning slang, but then at the same time, like when they actually try to branch out and teach you slang... It starts to come off as something that also comes out of a textbook. Japanese slang, you know. And then, like, you know, the problem also, too, with slang is slang evolves all the time. So, like, you'll see old slang, like, alien. Like, I've never seen the word, or, excuse me, heard the word alien used in Japan to describe somebody in a derogatory sense. Literally meaning alien, calling somebody an alien. Uh, next one on my list is bilingual news. I put this as honorable mention because uh, I, this one would probably actually go in one of my top five, but it doesn't because bilingual news is uh, well. I, I guess for this is mostly for people whose Japanese levels are very advanced. Um, I think the best thing about this podcast is that the speakers have like really sexy voices i mean like they have like the best podcast voices 
Um, I don't really like their opinions. Uh, <laughs> I was listening to a recent podcast they did on the George Floyd protests, and I was listening to the lady, because, like, it's one woman, one Japanese lady who speaks all in Japanese, and it's, like, one, I think, American guy, uh, Michael and Mammy are their names, and she was taking the stance of all lives matter, which is kind of irksome <laughs> if you've been following the, you know, uh, the conversation of today. I mean, I understand that you should probably challenge yourself every now and then with uh, different topics or different ways of thinking, but I don't know if you've ever had one of these friends that just has like one of these opinions that's so far up their ass. You're like, I can't listen to this. It's just like I don't, I don't under, I don't want to understand what, wh how your mind processes, um, what information, and that's kind of what really annoyed me about it is, uh, Mammy talking about all lives matter. I'm not gonna get into it here, but that was one of the things that took me out of it. I read through all the reviews, and it seems kind of like the opposite, where everybody kind of dunks. I've, the reviews say that everybody dunks on Michael for having two opinionated views. So, I mean, I guess what people would like about it is, is that it's very uh, honest, it's very frank. Um, and some people would argue like, they're censoring my voice for having an opinion. Well, I don't know, your opinion sucks. All right, next one. Tokyo Lens Podcast. Um, great opener, great music. But the one thing I hate about Tokyo Lens podcast is, um, let me just phrase it this way. Most of his podcasts are with, welcome to the Tokyo Lens podcast. I'm Tokyo Lens with Tokyo Lens about Tokyo Lens, about how Tokyo Lens does a thing that Tokyo Lens can do in Tokyo. I'm Tokyo Lens. That's Tokyo Lens Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I know that's cynical as hell, but, I mean, he does have some interesting topics every now and then. He reads some articles. Sometimes he reads articles just about himself. For me, maybe that was just one episode. I shouldn't dunk on him too hard. Um, I guess I can. I want to dunk on him hard because I asked him to be on my show, but uh, the more I think about it, I asked him through Instagram, and I think if you send somebody a message on Instagram... And you're not, and they're, and they're not following you. It immediately flags your message, and it probably gets marked as spam as a Russian bot wanting her want some some Russian lady telling you that she has some great webcam she wants you to see. Uh, the other podcast on here for I have a ton of honorable mentions. It was hard to put together this list. Tofugu, um, he does a great website called Wanikani where it's about learning kanji. Um, I know some people prefer the Anki method or the um, the Sudusu method. I forgot what that's called. Uh, a lot, like a lot of people, I just don't like the interface, and I find it kind of uh, it gives me kind of anxiety. Probably like what um, Simon Nochanama in the chat is saying right now about how Twitch is just there's too many buttons and too many things to do. So that's one of the reasons why I've never used the Anki method. But Wanikani's great. It's very n nice interface, easy to use. Um, but the podcast is kind of all over the place. It's not very well organized. I'm not saying mine's well organized. But uh, I remember he started one podcast where he started talking about the Sonic movie. And I wanted him to talk about the Sonic movie. Like, no, talk about that. And, but he wanted to talk about the difference between Ore and Boku and Watashi. And I mean, I guess... If there's like an interesting way you can present it, it's just the way he kind of presents things on his podcast. Like, okay, I guess we'll talk about this. It's like, no, just have a normal conversation. Just talk about what uh, you what comes to your mind or what brings you into Japanese or, you know, what... You know, I know you need to like transition into different topics and everything. Um, but I was thinking, just have a natural flowing conversation. That's all. I want to know Tofugu. <laughs> Let me know more about your brand. So that's one of the reasons why I don't listen. Um, the next one is a friend of mine, Lone Star under the Rising Sun podcast, Shay, who's uh, under the, what is it? He also twitches. He twitches. He streams on Twitch under the name either Lone Star 85 or I think he also does Fork Gaming. But um, I really like his show. He has a really good intro. 
Um, one thing I've kind of learned from his podcast I've, I've done to mine is a lot of the time he would kind of just put a person's name up, like the person he's interview or interviewing, excuse me, and it would be like some like guy like John Keats or Tom Keats or something. And I'm just sort of like, who's that? And then I don't listen. And then I would be talking to Shay, and then he would be saying something like, oh, this guy grew marijuana in Japan. I'm like, what? And it's like, why did you start with that? I mean, I know it's clickbaity as hell, but one thing I kind of learned from abroad in Japan, like via DMs and Twitter, was he was telling me, you got to start fix up the thumbnails and you got to start, you know, bringing people into the podcast a bit more. You can't just be, you know, um, putting somebody's name down, somebody you, you interviewed, especially if you want to grow a show, like no disrespect to my last guest, Mr. Red Value. Um, he's not very well known on the YouTube space or I guess not YouTube space. I shouldn't say that. Not a, not a lot. I'm mean, probably even Chris Broad's not even well known on the YouTube space. Maybe Japan foreigners space, I suppose. I guess you would say. Um, we had a long conversation about it. Go check it out in the the links or wherever below. Uh, you do you. Uh, but he's relatively unknown. So I felt the best way to kind of sell the show was to talk about how to be successful on TikTok, since it's one of these things where the image of TikTok is kind of just a bunch of these teenage girls dancing. Um, but recently TikTok's been trying to evolve away from that image. And we kind of have a really good conversation about it there. So I kind of feel like with the Lone Star and the Rising Sun podcast, he, he kind of, I, I think he probably knows this too, Shay. Hopefully you're listening, Shay. Uh, he gets a lot of great guests. I mean, sometimes I... I have guests I see get on my phone see that he has guests like damn I should have asked him first like he had a uh, um, John McAfee well then again I'm not gonna ask John McAfee because he has nothing to do with Japan and he's kind of going through this uh, I was talking to him yesterday on Twitch and he was saying that he's having a kind of a what would you call that He's having some trouble with the podcast himself. He's like me. He kind of wants to keep podcasting, but he doesn't want to always talk about Japan. And that's a real thing. So uh, I would say that Shay and my podcasts are pretty, you know, they're comparable. And I always talk to him in the DMs. You should go check him out is what I'm saying. My honorable mention that I'm not going to dunk on too hard because I know him pretty well. And if I do dunk on him, I'll just dunk on him in public. Uh, and if anybody who's watching who I dunked on today, please leave a comment and talk about how much you hated how much I dunked on you. I love it. And if you give me a thumbs down, let me know you gave me a thumbs down. <laughs> and if you're too shy to tell me that you gave me a thumbs down, then um, you're a coward. I'm sorry. <laughs> the only reason why I say that is because, you know, what's his name? Tony Soprano? Tony Soprano, I know I'm basing this on a fictional character, but I believe he has a good philosophy. Um, Tony Soprano once said that anybody who can't say something to your face is a waste of time and that they're a coward, and I believe it. Because uh, I live in a country where people love to be passive-aggressive, and passive-aggressiveness is pretty annoying after a while because, you know, they're not... Altercations are a big no-no in Japan, but... I digress, again. Uh, the next one I have in here is um, one that I think I listened to, but I can't remember anything about it, and I wrote it down here. It's called Living Japan. Well, whatever it was, I don't remember what it was, so that's why your honorable mention, but your name came up, and I guess it was cool. The next one is Work, uh, Live, excuse me, w Live, Work, Play Japan. Great podcast, uh, very highly influenced by the podcast, uh, what's it called? Uh, How I Built This by Guy Raz. Um, he makes podcasts based upon people who work in Japan, um, kind of similar to the the top, well, I won't get there yet. I, there's one that does one a podcast about working in Japan that, that's on the, the top five, which I haven't even gotten to yet. Yeah, so Live Work Japan is a, pr a pretty decent podcast with this guy named Charlie, 
and who interviews i'm pretty sure it's charlie i, I, I didn't write down money, many notes for this because these are just the honorable mentions because you didn't make the list so i don't need to get my facts right oh uh, <laughs> he interviews people who work in japan a lot of people i know um um, the only reason why it doesn't make it to the top five is because he hasn't made anything in a while. I think uh, if you're going to have a successful podcast or a podcast about Japan, you have to stay consistent, at least one a week. And if you're not staying consistent, I mean, you can take breaks every now and then. But, um, yeah, if you're not consistent, people are going to, you know, go somewhere else. Uh, it's kind of like, to use a metaphor, it's sort of like if you're a store and if your store is closed, People are going to go somewhere else for their content. Um, next one on this list is Just Japan Podcast, which is a former guest on this show, Busan Kevin. Uh, what, what other aliases he goes for? Mad for Maple. Um, great podcast. I mean, he does little uh, interviews kind of like mine. Not ex exactly well organized like mine. I mean, I'm not saying mine is better organized. I'm just saying that it's not organized like it's uh easily consumable because like the conversations can go anywhere um i've kind of i've been watching a bunch of podcasts with like with famous people like comedians and i noticed they like they talk about the most mundane things but the thing is with these famous people who talk about mundane things is because they're famous we kind of really dehumanize them as people so uh it's really fun to watch them talk about mundane things whereas like listening probably to me talk about mundane things isn't as exciting because i'm just some rando that you probably stumble across on the internet um but that's mainly criticism otherwise uh kevin has a great show oh and the uh, also he doesn't upload it in a while but i imagine he's not in a place to really podcast right now because he works in china and he he does a really good job i mean he, he posts a lot on twitter about him being a great teacher and i think a lot of people who probably work in japan who are teachers they really kind of loathe the job um and i don't think they probably take it seriously enough you know uh i feel like you know as teachers you're really contributing to somebody's education and you really change them as a person when you you educate them and I feel like if you ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of being a teacher, especially in a foreign country like Japan, where you know you're you realize you've hit the ceiling and you're not making enough, uh, there's not enough improvements made to your life, or things aren't changing. I, I think a lot of it is this is that if people aren't, or what, what's I forgot, it's like a Buddhist quote or something where it's like if if you're mad about people who won't change. That means that you yourself won't change, you know, given the situation. So if you're angry about being a teacher in Japan, it's because you refuse to change. I know, probably going to get some heat from that comment, but I don't care. You know what? <laughs> Life's too short. Don't be so goddamn negative. All right, moving on. John and Sam in Japan, the international comedy podcast. Um, This one's pretty good, but... uh. I don't, I, I kind of want to put it as my top five, but I think the biggest thing is, uh, I, I don't know. There's just, I'm not, not excited about listening to this one. I think maybe it's because they talk a lot about a lot of topics which aren't, uh, Japan related. I mean, they are, but I'm not finding them particularly exciting. Like w what's interesting is like the comedy scene in Japan uh, there basically isn't one. I mean, I guess there is one. Okay, I, I lie. I, I lie. There is one, but it's just like... The comedy scene in Japan is not very international. Because if you're coming to explain comedy that happens in Japan, it's only a few select people are going to get it. Because it's really cultural. Um, I, they're both from England. Um, I'm not saying that's like it's a bad thing. Um... And maybe there's a few things I can't relate to, or they talk about things that only really happen in England. I'm not saying that's a detriment about their podcast. Uh, I think maybe I should listen to it more. Uh, I mean, they often have guests, but um, I think there's a podcast that does it a lot better than they do. 
Um, and they're one of the podcasts that make my top five, which I still haven't gotten to. Um, let me see. How many more do I got? Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost there to my top five best podcast list. The next one on my list is Non-Native Creative, which I guess is not really a Japan podcast because it doesn't have Japan in the title. Um, this is, uh, what's your name? Alicia or Alsha? I can never pronounce her name. Um, I've, I follow her on Twitter. I don't think she follows me, so it's probably fair. Um, she she works for the Japan Podcast 101. She, you'll probably notice that she has a lot of uh, reviews and high numbers. So I'm sure working for a major, you know, working for a company that you know makes, um, uh, what is it, language learning uh, products that are successful will give you good numbers, you know. Like, my girlfriend, Kiki, she used to uh, live stream for Taobao, which is like a Chinese uh, live streaming site where, like, you basically use some product. It's like infomercials, but, like, on your iPhone. And she at least gets, like, 100 people watching. But the biggest thing is the numbers come from the name Taobao. They don't come from your own personal brand. They're not coming from, like me as Radri, maybe like if I, if I break out of the single digits of the number of viewers on like a given stream or whatever, um, then it's like, yes, I'm making it. Whereas like Taobao is like a name and people go there to like watch randos sell things. You know, it's like I'm not selling a product that's already well known. So I, I guess the moral, the th what I'm trying to say is, is that have, having a big product definitely helps it's having a big name. So non-native creative who is basically kind of like my show, Why Come Japan, is pretty good in that regard. But it's also kind of directionless as well. I mean, maybe that's the beauty of it, being directionless. But um, I kind of feel like if you want to be a stronger brand on the internet and if you want to grow or see more numbers on your show, you kind of have to... Um, I hate to use this word, but you have to do some McDonaldification, McDonaldsify your pro your videos or podcasts. You know, basically what I'm saying by that is like you have to kind of make them to where you have people ex know what they're going to get. Like when you go to McDonald's, you know what you're going to order and you know what you're going to get. It's kind of the same thing with like um, name brand properties. Would you rather watch Shrek Six? Or would you rather watch The Killer Fans from Outer Space? And you're like, that sounds like a B-movie. I'm definitely going to go with Shrek 6, right? So, that's my point. Next on my list is Uncanny Japan. Uncanny Japan is a short podcast about uh, the supernatural in Japan. It's a fun little listen. I'd put it as my top five, but I'm not always enthused about always clicking all the episodes. Um, maybe it's something about the titles that turns me off. I don't know. Um, I think, uh, the person who does it, Teresa, uh, she has a great voice. Really great voice. Um, and she adds a lot of diversity to the podcast. I mean, I really want on, I really want to put it as my number five. But, um, the problem is, is that I just don't listen to it enough. Um... And I think that has a lot to do with uh, the titles not grabbing me enough. So, sorry. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the top five podcasts. So, number five. Number five is the Tokyo Podcast with Anthony Joe. The reason why I put him at number five is because I really feel like he brings a lot of energy to every episode where I'm constantly engaged. And I, feel, I really like his charisma. And he always feels, you know, upbeat, and you always want to listen to the rest of the podcast, and he has guests on, and he makes, like, kind of uh, solo episodes, kind of like this one, where you kind of feel this, you kind of get into his head and his headspace, and how he kind of puts together Japan content, and I, I think it's rather fascinating. So, I mean, I whenever I see his podcast pop up on my feed... I'm always, like, willing to click on it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is exactly he does. I haven't figured out, per se, why I always feel like click. I don't feel, uh, I don't, you know, groan when I see his podcast show up on my feed. 
I never feel any negative feelings when I see his name. So that's why he makes number five. Number four, Inside Japan Podcast, formerly ALT Insider Podcast, with James Vinovich. Um, obviously, I, I'm biased because uh, I was on his show. And also, I think there's a lot to learn from him. He does... He has a lot of consistency to a lot of his um, episodes. Uh, I don't always listen to them. He's definitely taught me some things, like particularly like what I was saying about uh, Lone Star in Japan podcast. This is that he puts in like a title, trying to grab you with the title. Like I, I will listen to one episode with him. He had this one teacher on who was uh, not convicted. But accu- okay, accused of taibatsu, which is like, yes, yeah, taibatsu, not taibutsu. I always mix that up in my head because I have dyslexia or something. I don't know. Um, he uh, supposedly like he hit some girl over the head with like like a whiteboard, like a little whiteboard, and they went ape shit about it. Um, very interesting episode. Uh, but otherwise, if like they just if uh, James just put the name as the title like that guy's name i would not know who that is and i wouldn't have clicked on it i wouldn't have listened to it so he always tries to find ways to make his episodes more digestible and yeah like i said he's also consistent uploads every week um he always challenges the guests um i feel like that's something i can kind of learn as well and i think he's always he's always full of positivity and he always i whenever i ask him to like do projects with me he's always game and he's always very positive. And I feel like being positive is definitely a, a thing that, you know, we need more of in this world. Uh, I mean, not forced positivity, of course, but just positivity for, you know, being optimistic. Because uh, it's very easy to be negative. Very easy. Um, I always feel like if you're going to be negative, you should always end in a positive or have some sort of optimistic view on life. All right, number three, the Broad in Japan podcast. Now, I know, Chris, I'm not, again, this is not a plug because I'm not, this is also not me being biased, but the reason why I put his podcast on here, I mean, I guess one thing I could dunk on him a bit is is that it's a little uh, unoriginal. I guess, I don't know. I guess if I called my podcast the Radry podcast, it would be a little redundant. Like, I kind of feel like the Tokyo Lens podcast is a little redundant. It's like Tokyo Lens podcast, Tokyo Lens t-shirt, Tokyo Lens the coloring book. But um, what do you expect? I mean, you know what you're getting. It's like the McDonaldification thing I was talking about. You know, you're going to get Chris Broad, and he has his friend Pete Donaldson, who's a lot of fun. He's a great co-host, has lots of charisma, always positive, nice to listen to, uh, has a good sense of humor. Um he used to, as if you've listened to the show he used to be a radio dj and so he has a good voice i mean obviously not everyone's going to have a good voice when you go into podcasting but it definitely helps if you have kind of like a deeper voice um it often helps to not i, I in my opinion i don't feel like you should speak too fast i don't think you should speak too slow unless you're like doing audiobooks or asmr or something yeah so getting back to the broad in japan podcast it's fun it's conversational uh it's very consistent i guess if i was also going to dunk on it a little more um it's a little clickbaity but i guess that's what you kind of have to do especially if it's you know, you, you're trying to pump out podcast material and you, you're you out of ideas. Um, like, maybe one of the things that the podcast is about... I mean, I guess technically, I'm talking about a lot of shit, but um, not all of it's about the top five podcasts. So, I mean, maybe that's what people show up for. They like the all the little small banter and little tiny things. I guess I feel a little cheated when I see a title and it's not just about one topic. It's about many things. Or maybe that's a better thing. I don't know. Hard to say. That's why he goes up on number three. Because I think, uh, like his his videos on YouTube, it's well produced, well put together, it's fun, it's entertaining. And, you know, you're not disappointed after you listen. Alright, so, number two. The second best podcast on my list 
goes to Deep Dive, the Japan Times podcast. I know this is kind of a brand podcast, and I should like, you know, I should go for the homemade ones, the homebrews, right? But I do really like the way they structure their episodes. Um, like, for example, they did one recently on the whole George Floyd protests and the Black Lives Matter uh, situation, and they had somebody from the Black Lives Matter protest, uh, someone I've never heard of, um, but the way they introduced them, they didn't introduce the guest as, like, like this is Jennifer Gardner. I know that's an, that's an actress. Or this is Jennifer... Jennifer P. Like, who's that? You know, like, swipe, swipe left, you know. <laughs> I know this isn't Tinder, but I'm just saying that, you know, the way they kind of framed it is, like, it made me want to listen to it. The way they kind of, like... They had a subject, they talk about Black Lives Matter in Japan, and then what they did with that is they set it up to where it's like they, they have the subject, and then they have uh, the guest. Because I, I read somewhere, I, you know, I do a bunch of Googling and how to improve your podcast, and obviously, you know, I need to have a jingle and shit like that, but I haven't found one that really fits for it. I've been looking for years for a good jingle for this thing, but none of them seem to click with me. Anyway, the point being is when I was looking up on Google, they had the three things that people listen to podcasts for. Number one, or I should start at the bottom. Number three is uh, the host. So obviously that's me. Number two is the guest. And number three is the topic. So obviously the topic is really important. So like, for example, um, as much as I think it's kind of crass and a little uh, insensitive, the everybody does want to know more things about the Black Lives Matter situation. I mean, I feel like it's kind of, uh, what is it? it? It feels kind of disingenuous in a way because you're taking human tragedy and you're turning it into content. But at the same time, it's like something that needs to be heard and something that people want to know more about. So I, I guess it's fine. But... Um, I don't know. Uh, I I don't. I can't really have any opinions about the whole situation. I didn't really say anything on Twitter, <laughs> and I don't want to end up like the Andy son and make a a video about it and then get it deleted, <laughs> and then have it delete it later because trolls on 4chan find it. <laughs> so, um, so I I really feel like if we want to know more about it, I guess it, it's good. Uh, and Japan there was a deep dive with uh, Oscar Boyd, who'd love to have on the show. Hope you're listening. Probably isn't. I mean, he's uh, good friends with the former guest in the show, Patrick St. Michelle. And he gave me his contact info, but I'm nervous as hell. But I always have to think about what it is I'm going to say before I approach a guest. And it, you know what's funny? Is I always have people who show up in my, my mentions or my chat, and they're like, just ask him. He's just a person. He's just a human. It's like, yeah, but you don't do a show. You don't know what it's like asking people. You know, it's all about... Uh, asking people the right time and place. It's like, you know, reading the situation. It's all about social cues. Um, I'm getting better at this. I mean, I guess one thing for people who are just starting their podcasts, uh, advice I can give is um, you're going to always have guests that will say no to so just get used to it. Um, that's one thing I've kind of learned to accept. Um, and sometimes you may get lucky. You may get big guests like Chris Broad, like what I did. Because they respect what you do and they they feel like you have something you know you're actually producing content that you know that they enjoy um so yeah you will get lucky and you will not always win it's like playing a slot machine sometimes <laughs> good uh <laughs> metaphor for life um other things i can include about deep dive is their pacing is really good i mean obviously it's really highly edited you can tell that like they're putting in musical cues to push the pacing forward. They have specialists. They have journalists. Um, of course, they're a newspaper, so of course they have access to all this. And it's nice to be able to have lots of access. If you can always put in lots of musical cues or clips or audio clips, that always helps. Like I feel like they do a lot of that. Um, yeah, and I think also having... Oh, yeah, I guess a really big thing is they always talk about timely pro, uh, topics, like I just said with the Black Lives Matter thing. 
um, stuff about whaling, things about the election season. Uh, they had one on Carlos Ghosn, which was really good. Because um, I feel like some t things like Carlos Ghosn, um, which can be a very polarizing topic, a lot of us don't know too much information about it. So that, therefore, like podcasts like that are really helpful because, you know, they, they give us more information about the news and how we should interpret it. You know, instead of just reading soundbite, uh, was it titles off Facebook? And, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to dunk on myself a little bit because I do this too, but we just sometimes we read the title and then we share it on Facebook or Twitter or one of these things and we add in our ad hominem uh, opinion, and but we don't actually read the full article. So we don't have a greater context. So I feel like as a resource, Deep Dive is great, and that's why it makes my number two. All right, so number one, the best podcast in Japan which nobody is really listening to, or maybe they are, and I'm just not noticing. Um, it doesn't have that many reviews, which is why I say this, is Japan by River Cruise. It is a great podcast. It's only 30 minutes long. It's hosted by the YouTuber Bobby Judo and uh, stand-up comedian Ollie Horn, a guy I've never heard of. I feel like I should know that name, but I don't. Um, he's got a great, fun intro. Uh, there's nice music cues to it. Um, yeah, I think I, wait, I think some, one of the music cues is kind of cheesy the more I think about it. But um, the pacing is really good. They 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 uh, they cut it up. It's obviously it's only thirty minutes. It's like a perfect. Um, I don't think people want to listen to too long of podcasts. Like as you saw, maybe if you're here in the live show, the red value noped out because uh, he's not really much of a podcast guy. And I want more people who aren't podcast guys to be listening past the hour mark or past like the 20 minute mark to just, you know, up my um, view time or whatever. And so like they always cut out the most interesting bits like they re they have really good guests on like uh, they had Jake Edelstein on. They had Baye McNeil who did the thing on the Black Lives Matter thing. Um they had, uh, they know a lot of stand-up comedians. Um, I guess with kind of my show, my thing is I just interview a bunch of YouTubers because I guess that's my thing because I know a lot of YouTubers and I'm sure with them they know a lot of stand-up comedians. It gets a little redundant, but uh, it's not bad. I mean, I they make a pretty good show. One thing I really like about it is they always introduce some new story that's going on in Japan and the guest reacts to it. It feels kind of game showy, kind of something I want to go for. I would like to do a show where I interview a guest and I talk about the news, but I don't want to ape their style too much because uh, I feel like it's I'm kind of losing my own voice. But I might try it, see how I work with it, because you know it's like I don't. I always feel like copying people is okay. Um, it does like even if you copy people, it, as long as you don't copy them like 100%. Like, to the T, I think it's okay. Because, like, whenever you copy someone, yours is always going to be different. And uh, the biggest thing about Japan by River Cruise, I mean, it's a very weird name. But if you think about it, Why Come Japan's also a weird name. So I guess I don't mind it too much. Because, obviously, I got this title, Why Come Japan, from annoying questions that uh, Japanese people ask you as a foreigner. And, you know, it's kind of a bastardization of why did you come to Japan. So I, I feel like it kind of gives me confidence in a way. It's like, man, here's a lame name, and they're doing something great with it. Um, but another good thing is Ollie Horn, the uh, stand-up comedian on that show, he loves the challenge and, you know, dunk on the guests. I'm like, almost like to a point where it's like, man, that's, that's, uh, that's too much. Like, he goes a little bit too far, I think. But somehow I feel like uh, the, the co-host, Bobby Judo, also YouTuber, who also stars in television, Fukuoka. He kind of, uh, he's there to, like, not let Ollie go too far or insult the guests too much. Because I don't, I always feel like it's good to challenge guests, but it's not good to step on their shoes. Or step on their toes, quote-unquote. And what I mean by that is, like, you don't want to insult them too much. I mean, you can insult them a little bit. Like, a little bit, just to, like see what kind of reaction you get. Like, I mean, I love watching interview shows um, 
particularly people like Colbert, uh, Stephen Colbert in his late night show, uh, um, let's see, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, um, uh, <laughs> Eric Andre, even though I would never go as far as the way Eric Andre interviews his guests, that's like maximum insult. Uh, I mean, it makes a great show, but um, <laughs> I feel like Ollie's kind of pulling out of the Eric Andre bag a little bit at times. It, it kind of takes me out of it. It kind of makes me not want to push on the show. But I guess, I don't know. He does kind of add a lot to it. So, uh, yeah, and the reason I, I really feel like my show should be a bit more like them, game showy, you know what you get. And good guests, or good topics, I mean, sometimes they don't always have the best guests. I mean, like I said, they have um, comedians on who I've never heard of, or Twitch streamers I've never heard of. Not saying that's a bad thing. I guess what you need to do to fix that is just fix the topic, or like what kind of topic you're talking about. It's like, today we're going to talk about uh, Japan, fr Japan Friends 74. Okay. You know, whereas like if you had a title like how to Twitch in Japan, or, like, um, Twitch is really taking off in Japan. It's probably a better way to market it. But, anyway, I could say negative things about anything. So, thus is a list of five best podcasts. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you've made it this far, be sure to write in the comments, Bacon Cheeseburger, or in the five-star review, write Bacon Cheeseburger, or however it is, whatever it is you want to write. Um preferably something positive um because positivity does help for the growth of this channel uh or podcast or live stream or i don't know my content creation there you go um so next week on this show is kanton japan uh julian i forgot his last name it's something ski forgive me forgive me julian forgive me let me let me look it up here real quick uh, Julian Dominski. So, uh, he's a new podcaster. He just started podcasting. So hopefully this is a good transition to go from this podcast to another podcast. So, and until then, I'm Radri. Wait, let's try that again. So, until then, I'm Radri and... Jesus, man.